That's him in pure breeding dress. My Neolamprologus Lupi Great Aquarium. But you can see all the plumbing I've built. And that's why I think I've had such good success with raising some challenging species. Okay, so my full fish room tour for 2024. I wanted the first video of the year to be my full fish room tour. And uh, it's taken me a while to get some time to do it. So let's get straight into it. We'll show off this tank. Uh, my favorite tank in the fish room my white Alto Lampologus Calvus Fry Great Aquarium. These definitely aren't fry anymore, uh, but I have spawned every single one of these guys in the fish room, and I'm quite proud of this tank. Uh, I think it's, it looks stunning, beautiful tank. I think it's quite unique uh, to have this many Calvus in the one aquarium, and um, I definitely wouldn't recommend you do this long term. Uh, I say that all the time to my subscribers who are, have been watching my videos for a while now. Uh, don't do this, I don't recommend you keep this many calvus long term in your aquariums uh, in a tank this size. This tank is five foot long, uh, but for the quantity of fish in this tank, uh, it's far too much to keep forever like this. I'm always selling these guys off and the quantity is always fluctuating. Uh, that's why I'm able to get away with it. The other reason why I'm able to get away with it um, is because I run this tank on a sump system. There's over 3,000 litres of water on my sump system and uh, you see they're getting spooked out. And on this sump system, the water parameters are pretty stable and that's why I can get away with it because of the large quantity of water that I have on this sump system. So yeah, it doesn't take much for them to get spooked out. And um, you can see that once one gets spooked out, the whole school of them follows. But uh, yeah, some of these guys are quite large and um, I'm quite proud of them, like I said. Beautiful fish. My favorite fish in the fish room. Pretty much started off with my favorite uh, tank in the fish room as well. Next tank I'll show you is my, is the tank underneath them, obviously. My Neolampologus Lupi Great Aquarium. In here we've got some Fursifer Risha, as well as Judicromus Regani. Uh, part of the cleanup crew in both these aquariums are some bristlenose catfish. All of them are the short fin variety. I don't keep any long fin bristlenose in uh, with cichlids as part of the cleanup crew because their fins would get nipped by the cichlids. Uh, so I just keep the short fin varieties. And in these tanks, you can see they're quite large, the bristlenose. Some of them are monsters. Uh, like in the back corner there, you can see that albino bristlenose, pretty large. Uh, and there are some other bigger ones in here as well. But yeah, this tank's pretty nice to watch. Uh, the school of Fursifer Risha swimming back and forth together throughout the tank is uh, nice to see and obviously the Le Lupi and their beautiful yellow coloration. Uh, so yeah, I really enjoy looking at this aquarium and um, there's always Le Lupi in this tank. It's a tank that I've just dedicated to all my Le Lupi uh, fry to grow out and you can see how large these Le Lupi are. There are adults in here, they're at, obviously at the breeding size and I do need to move them on. Been a little bit lazy with these guys lately and moving them on so uh, I need to put my finger out and get that done. But anyway, on to the next aquarium. Okay, this is the next tank, my white Atomampologus calvus breeding pair. So you saw the fry up here. This is the parents. That's the male there. And every single one of those fry has been bred in these ton shells. These shells are called ton shells, T-O-N. And uh, yeah, I've always spawned all my calvus, my whites and my black calvus, in these sorts of shells. And every single one of those fry you saw on the first aquarium, spawn in these two shells you see right here and that's their father it's a little bit spooked out because i've got the phone right up against the aquarium obviously and his female is at the back of the tank behind or underneath that cave and uh, they spawned about two weeks ago i didn't get many fry out of the shell probably about 10 but uh, the, the fry are doing quite well and uh, a little bit disappointed obviously uh, i'd like to see a little bit more uh, come out of that shell other than 10. Uh, the most i've had is over 100. But uh, yeah, these guys have done really well for me and um, I love them. But yeah, I don't want to speak them out too much longer. My black Alto Lampologus Calvus tank. So you can see one there, that's the smallest Calvus that's in this aquarium. Uh, but there are some large ones in here as well. And uh, there's quite a number of bristlenos in this tank as part of the cleanup crew. Again, short fin variety, but both albino and the normal coloured blacks. Uh, so yeah, in this aquarium there are four black Altolampologus calvus and uh, they're spooked as well, unfortunately. But um, I'm sure I'm going to find some footage on some old hard drives that I'll be able to put up and show you guys what they look like because the largest one in here, the male, is massive compared to the other fish that are in here. So these guys are Altolampologus as well, but the Compressorceps variety, not the calvus. Uh, the difference between Compressorceps and calvus is that calvus have a more slender body, uh, more, more pointier, uh, longer, uh, but whereas the 
outside lumbar locus compressor steps, they have a higher back. Their body's a little bit higher. Um, so yeah, you can, that's that's kind of how you can tell the difference. And um, but there are some other differences that people say that exist, such as iridescent spots down the sides of calvus. Uh, but compressor steps have uh, some of the compressor steps do have iridescent spots down their sides as well. Uh, now this team obviously you can't see any fish at the moment, uh, apart from again cleanup crew bristle nose. But uh, the female is in this shell. Yesterday, I'll show the footage now, uh, the male is right up against this shell with his female, and I believe they spawn. I believe this is the third time they've, that they have spawned uh, in this tank. There's only two in here now. Actually, I can see the male. There he is, hiding. He's pretty big, nice and uh, yellow gold coloration. Uh, this is the full gold compressor steps, not just the gold head. This is the gold compressor steps, full body gold. Uh, but yeah, they was, I believe they were spawning yesterday. Uh, third time I've spawned them, have not seen any fry. And they definitely know I've spawned them at least once. I suspect I've spawned them three times, like I said. Uh, that one time was the second attempt, the second time. And I saw some eggs that were kicked out of this shell, again a ton shell. Uh, and they were scattered kind of on the slate here. And obviously I'll show you that video um, where, where those eggs were scattered. They were kicked out of the shell as they were spawning. Uh, the female that's in this shell hardly ever leaves the shell except to feed and she's about she's less than half the size of the male but yeah i do believe i've spawned them three times but i've only ever seen the eggs once unfortunately no fry now on to the next tank you guys haven't seen this aquarium in a while i've been looking forward to showing you it uh this is my neolamprologus similis aquarium and the last time you saw this tank there were five adults in the aquarium and as you can see there yeah, are quite a few more fish in this aquarium now. Uh, I've spawned these guys countless times now. Uh, some of the larger fry are starting to develop the barring down the sides. See I'm spooking them with the mobile phone. Sorry about that fish. Uh, but yeah, uh, there's now four uh, there's now two adult females and two males. One of the females died. I don't know if it was from bullying or, or something, but I just came into the fish room one day, noticed her dead unfortunately. So I had five adults in here. There's now four, uh, but as you can see, I've got a lot more adults coming through with uh, a lot of fry, which is nice to see. This has been one of my favorite tanks over the last few months to watch interactions with these fish, the digging, the spawning, the courtship. It's been really interesting to watch. And uh, this male over here, I don't think he spawned with either of the two females, but he doesn't eat fry. So pretty interesting to see that. I do believe that the older generations of fry are preying on the newer spawns though, uh, unlike Multifasciatus. These guys I think have been preying on their younger brothers and sisters. Uh, but there's not much you can do about that, especially for shell dwellers. They just go straight into the shell and they hide. Um, you could probably move them out just by moving the whole shell out of the aquarium and into another aquarium, but I don't have many shells left uh, because I've, a lot of the shells I had are looking like that one there with holes all over them. Uh, that one there, they're all decaying, so I need to get some more shells. But the other reason is I just let them be. Just, just let nature run its course and it's an interesting tank to watch. So yeah, beautiful tank. I'm going to do an in-depth species profile on these guys very, very soon. And uh, But like I said, I wanted to get this video out first in, uh, for my first video of the year. Uh, and yeah, I'm really sorry guys. It's just taking me a while to get to this point uh, to be able to have some time to film uh, the Fisher and Tour for you guys. So let's go on to the next tank. Surprise, surprise. Neolamprologus Lelupi. Uh, my first initial breeding pair that I got to uh, spawn uh, out of the four adults I bought. The pair that's in here is the first uh, pair that formed. And you can see all the fry they got with them quite large. Uh, they really need to be moved on into that grey outer cream. But I've purposely kept this like this so I can just show you guys the fish room and what it looks like right now. But uh, I do need to move them out of here and into the five footer. See the tank next to them. It's got quite a few more fry. Again, Neil Ampelogus Lay Loopy. Uh, in here is the second pair that formed from the four adults I purchased. Uh, so I was lucky to get two pairs out of the four I purchased. And the, the parents in here have managed to grow out two spawns of fry at the same time. And that's why there's a lot more fish in this aquarium uh, than in this one here. Uh, so they loopy, or my lay loopy anyway, uh, when the parents spawn, if there's fry already in the aquarium, that, those older fry will eat the newer spawn. Uh, the younger generation of fry will get eaten uh, by the older generation. Uh, but And the female in this aquarium hasn't been able to recognise... She was at first, but she's kind of lost that instinct to recognise the fry that currently are in the tank as a threat to her new spawn. So she lets these fry eat the new spawn. However, the female in this tank, 
she done really well to raise two, two lots of fry. She protected the younger spawn from the older fry, and uh, you can see the two different sizes that are in here. Uh, there's some, you know, there's some uh, different sizes in there. So yeah, they come on really well, all coloured up. Uh, even at the 1.5 centimetre mark, the, 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 the smaller Leilupia, full yellow coloration already. This bloodline is incredible. Uh, so really pleased with them. And in here is my mixed community aquarium. Uh, quite a lot of fish in here. Uh, you can see that beautiful blue male, uh, first of her Risha, trying to get some attention from the females. Um, there are, there's one Gelidochromus for a Ghani female in here. Two uh, Neoamprologus Cordo Punctatus, two adults, I believe they're two males. The excess gold Altoamprologus Compressor Seps, I've got four in here, they didn't, they didn't pair up. And some bristle nose as part of the cleanup crew again. So the first fur Risha, as you can see that male is really trying to get the female's attention. Uh, I've been lucky enough with the ratio that I've got, I've got two males and three females. Obviously I would have preferred to have four females, but it's actually pretty good to have that male in there because uh, he, this main dominant male, takes out some of his aggression across the male, this male here, the excess male, and the three females. So uh, he's not just hounding the three females all the time, he's got some competition with that excess male and that does help him colour up. Now you can see in this footage here that uh, I filmed a couple days earlier where they were actually spawning, actually a couple of weeks ago where they were actually spawning, uh, the coloration the male gets when he's really in breeding, breeding dress. Uh, it's really intense that the, the fins go jet black and he gets that beautiful blue, purple, greenish tinge down the body. That iridescence is just insane. Uh, and yeah, that's just a team in pure breeding dress. Incredible. The other thing I'll note, um, I'll mention in this aquarium, is look at the sand bed. All the sand on this side, hardly anything on here. You can actually see the bottom of the tank. Uh, this sand bed was full, uh, level out. It was just completely the same level all the way through. That guy, the dominant Fursifer Risha, has picked up all the sand from here, dumped it over there, and then dug his pit out in that massive mound of sand that he built. So then he spat all the sand back out. So uh, quite crazy. Imagine these guys in the wild and they're, they're open sand beds, trying to get the attention of females to come to their pit. Uh, it'll be insane to see in the wild. But uh, yeah, trying to replicate that here. These guys do need a larger tank than this unfortunately i've got them in my largest aquarium that i have uh four by four foot long by two foot wide by two foot height aquarium but uh it should be bigger it really should be bigger but i just don't have the space and i love these fish and i have spawned them which is quite good so i'll just quickly show you some of the grout aquariums grout aquariums are all along here air filter these double headed sponge filters with the suction caps they are always coming off uh from the back of the aquarium i normally put a rock at the back just to hold them down, but uh, this one's come off, just managed to get out. Uh, there's multiple fish in these aquariums, nothing really too exciting that you haven't seen yet. Oh, we, there are some fish you haven't seen yet. In here are some white Alderlamprologus calvus fry, they're about the two centimeter mark now, there's not many in there. And here are some Lamprologus oscillatus gold, there's a lot of fry in there, but you can't really see them because of the reflection. And in there, uh, there's shell dollar from Lake Tanganyika. I don't have any shells in the grout aquariums. Just have some cut up PVC pipes. Just they move around and dig and bury in the sand. Uh, they're able to move them up and stand them upright or do whatever they want. And uh, that's good enough for them to keep them happy. Uh, if you put shells in your grout aquarium with your shell dwellers, you're never gonna catch them when you want to come when it comes time to sell them. So just use some cut up PVC pipe. As you can see there, really uh, makes the job a little bit quicker. There are some bristlenose catfish in here. You can see some long fin variety. Um, bristle nose in here are the white Altonampologus calvus fry, the latest calvus fry that I got from that pair the other week. So there's like 10 in here. Uh, some more Lamprologus oscillatus gold, uh, just excess ones. I really should merge all these oscillatus gold together. And here are some more first fur Risha fry. These are the youngest ones I've got. Uh, long term subscribers on my channel will know that I uh, really was. Um, pushing for the females to raise the fry themselves. I, didn't, I really didn't want to uh, get the females out and milk the females and then raise the fry in egg tumblers or the eggs into egg tumblers. Um, I wanted the females instincts to kick in so they would learn to become good mothers and hold their fry full term. Uh, I believe that if we, keep, if we keep doing that, that instinct's gonna be lost on our fish, on those mouth breeding fish. So um, in the interest of 
getting the fry to learn how to be good parents or how to be good mothers, um, I've sacrificed probably about 10 lots of fry, 10 lots of mouthfuls just to get them to this stage. But they are finally holding full term. So I'll come home and I'll notice that there's fry in the aquarium. You know, that I'll catch the female out, I'll put her in here. She'll be, she'll be in one of these grad aquariums for a number of weeks, uh, maybe three to four weeks after. I'll, I'll let her be in the tank for about a week with the mouthful and then eventually I'll get her out. And then about three or four weeks later, I'll come home and I'll find fry swimming in the aquarium with their mum. You know, and it's quite interesting to see. It's a nice surprise. And again, it's less work for me. Right? I don't have to milk the, the mother and get the eggs into an egg tumbler and attach an air pump and everything to, to raise the fry myself. Uh, obviously, that's not hard to do. I could do it. Uh, but I believe we're sacrificing that parental instinct, that, that maternal instinct that the females need to raise these guys. And they're not passing that on to the other generation. That's just my thoughts on it anyway. Uh, obviously, I would have had a lot more fry to sell if I uh, got the eggs out of the mother uh, and milked it earlier. But I don't want to do that. I want these fry to have that instinct and to pass it on to the other generations. And then that in turn will help future hobbyists raise these guys up a little easier. And then yeah, that's pretty much what's in these tanks up here. Go to the other side of the fish room. So you can see all these tanks here on another rack. These two tanks here, the two five footers, are on the sump that runs to there. So there's a PVC pipe that runs across the bottom of the room, goes to that sump. And all these tanks are connected as well. You can see the common drain line from the top row, goes into the sump as well. So all these tanks equate to over 3,000 litres of water. And I can move any, any fish from these tanks into another tank. I don't need to acclimate them. I don't need to test for pH on each aquarium. I don't need to test the hardness of each aquarium. I just test the hardness or pH or whatever parameter I want to measure on one aquarium. And I know the whole system is that, that pH. And that's why I think I've had such good success with raising some challenging species like the calvus to that size. Look how big they are, they're massive. It's because of the water volume the consistency in the water parameters. They don't fluctuate as, as much as they would as individual tanks. Uh, the water parameters stay really stable, a lot more stable than 3,000 litres of water rather than, say, 100 litres of water. But anyway, I'll show you what's on these tanks. I did drill them. I do intend them to connect, to connect them to this sump here. Been so lazy, I haven't done it yet. But uh, up here, they're empty. I just use these top, this top row of tanks for uh, water changes for water, as water reservoirs and I drain these tanks into the tanks below when I do water changes. That's all I'm using them for, they're empty. It's a bit of a waste, but that's how it is at the moment. Uh, so in this aquarium, see loads of fry, and these are my Neolamprologus coolurus. See the massive male there. They look similar to Neolamprologus brevis, but uh, this guy is massive, like d double, maybe three times the size. His females in there, I haven't seen her for a number of days. They've definitely spawned in that shell, uh, but he's refusing to let her come out of that shell. We're just quite uh, crazy. You can see the amount of fry they're raising this aquarium? Heaps. Uh, but yeah, we'll see how they go. They're going quite well in here. I don't believe the latest spawn that's in that shell once they come out, I don't believe they're going to survive because these fry do prey on their younger brothers and sisters like the late loopy do. So it's quite lucky you can see there's uh, two different sizes in the fry here if you look close. Some are larger than the other ones and uh, the parents were able to protect the younger generation of fry from the older generation. Uh, but yeah, they're doing alright. I just don't think the latest generation that's going to come out of that shell in a number of days will survive. Uh, but that's okay. In here, uh, some more cichlids. Surprise, surprise. Gelidochromus regani Zambia Gold. Uh, this breeding pair is incredible. Uh, that's the female there. Beautiful coloration. Love the dark coloration on these guys because they're kept in a tank with uh, black uh, contact paper on all sides of the aquarium and in the bottom has black neoprene uh, instead of white styrofoam. So uh, the black on all sides makes the fish go a little darker but I think that really works with the, with the Regani. Look at these beautiful fry. That blue fringing on the fins. The female is just stunning. And uh, yeah, really happy with these guys. And yeah, the last tanks. Uh, these ones down here. Just bristle nose catfish. Guys, uh, in here we've got some peppermint bristle nose. Uh, the tank gets very dirty very quickly. Uh, there are five adults in here, and there are fry. They're hard to spot. <laughs> it's like there's nothing in here right now. And um, where are they? Oh, there's, I can see a white tail there. It's moving around. 
So that's one of the fry. Anyway, they're in here. And uh, in this tank, we've got my uh, common coloured long fin bristle nose, but they spit out albino short fin, albino long fin, and long fin common, as well as short fin common. So four different types of bristle nose from the one type in here. Uh, it's quite crazy that I'm getting all that from uh, the one type of bristle nose. And uh, the last two tanks in the fish room are bristle nose as well. These ones in here are a combination of the albino short fin and the black short fin. And you can see uh, the amount of fry that are in here at the moment. Again, pretty messy. They only did a water change on this tank oh, two days ago, three days ago. So, um, yeah. Bristle nose catfish are very, very messy fish. Uh, so, um, I've only got twin double headed sponge filters in here. Uh, two of them, uh, but I did have power filters in here, but I was finding that it was making the water cloudy. So uh, I removed them and uh, I just siphon out the feces at the moment. Um, it does take a little bit of time and you gotta be very careful not to suck up the, the fry, the bristlenose fry, but it's okay. The Albino Longfin Bristlenose Aquarium. So in here, the parents of these fry uh, were spawned from black longfin bristlenose. Uh, I picked out the albino long fins from uh, their spawns and grew them up in this tank and now their fry are always just long fin albino bristlenose. They no longer spit out the black variety, they no longer spit out short fins, they're always just spitting out now long fin albino. So it only took one generation of spawning to get to uh, the long fin albino bristlenose being constantly um, spawned in this tank. Now you can see there are a lot of fry in this aquarium and um, I'm constantly, again, moving them out of here and on selling them to our local fish stores and at the Cichlid Club. So uh, I really like uh, the albino long fin bristlenose. They're beautiful long fins. They almost look like the dress of a Spanish dancer where they, when they fan it out and swim around. Uh, but I do not keep these with any other fish. Uh, any, any fish that would nip at, nip at the fins, uh, you want to avoid long fin bristlenose altogether, unfortunately. But yeah, these catfish are really beautiful. Um, and they stand out a lot more in the darker tank, obviously. And uh, yeah, with that, those long flowing fins are just uh, something special with the bristlenose. So I'm quite happy that through one generation of fry from normal long fin bristlenose, I was able to get a few albinos. And then from those albinos, lime bream to just punch out uh, the long fin albino bristlenose. So uh, I just wanted a lot more of them uh, because obviously they are in demand in the hobby. I'll show you around the sump area. So there's the sump. Uh, we've got a filter sock on the inlets, then there's sponges, there's a bubble trap that goes up into the, so this is mechanical filtration, this is biological filtration, so the water goes down, mechanical filtration all through there, up the bubble trap, spills over into the uh, biological filtration which is just pumice stone and uh, volcanic lava rock, goes down there, past the egg crate, up this bubble trap and into the return filter uh, and heater compartment. Now this room is heated. It is heated by aircon, but in here are two 300 watt Eheim heaters as well, as well as three return pumps. So this return pump only powers water to the five footers, the two five footers I showed you with the Leilupi and the white calvus, that first tank. Uh, this one powers the top row of tanks, and this one powers the middle row, and the two tanks at the bottom. Now if we go around the back, it's quite messy back here. But you can see all the plumbing I've built. Return lines, drain lines, it's all here. Took a few months to design and build in my spare time. Got it done. But I'm reaping the rewards now because I have very stable water parameters. But uh, yeah, these tanks, I've always intended to put them on this sump system. I've just been really lazy and haven't gotten around to doing all that plumbing work again. Because as you can see, there is a lot of work involved. And <laughs> I've just lacked the motivation to do it. So all these tanks, uh, these six tanks get changed. Their water changes are done weekly as well. Uh, I drain the two cyclic tanks halfway and all the uh, water in these tanks, I drain into about or an inch or two above the bottom. And uh, so about 90% water changes on the Bristol Nose Aquariums. And uh, that's it every week. But yeah, there you go, guys. 
my fishing tour for 2024. There are a lot of videos on this channel which I'm sure will help you with breeding sp specific species like the Calvus, the Lamprologus ocellata scald, the Leilupi, the Regani, the bristlenose. I've got very in-depth species profiles on my channel uh, on all those fish and how to breed them. And I'm sure if you enjoyed this video, you'll enjoy those in-depth species profiles. Anyway guys, really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the comment, like and subscribe buttons. I really would appreciate it. Alright guys, going to wrap this video up now. Thanks heaps for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.